Hello, I am the Spider Lord and I am here to tell you the truth about spiders. Welcome to Spider Lord TV. Okay, so following on from the previous two species videos, Steatoda nobilis and Arachigena atrica, we are going to move on to a, another very common spider in the UK, uh, and another one that is the uh, subject of another old wives' tale uh, myth. And this spider is Fulcus phalangoides, the long-bodied cellar or skull spider. Uh, it's a focus focus, if you'll uh, excuse the term. Now, this spider is um, of worldwide distribution um, and has disproportionately large legs or long legs compared to its body. Hence its common nickname, Daddy Long Legs. Now, Daddy long legs uh, also refers to two other types of invertebrates. Um, it's used for harvestmen, um, which are not spiders, but they are arachnids. Um, and it's also used for crane flies. Um, these are also you know, both referred to uh, as daddy long legs. But Focus uh, phalangoides is a spider and uh, it's quite an unusual spider in many ways, which we will now discuss. That sound is one of the sandfish skinks scrabbling about. Sorry about that. Um, so cellar spiders um, are one that you will very, very often find in the corner of a room. In fact, I've got one up there and one there that looks like it's just molted. Now, normally I would uh, evict these spiders for a reason you'll find out very soon, but it's a little bit cold at the moment and they don't do well in cold temperatures. You will generally find them in sheltered areas, um, car parks, sheds, they're big on sheds, uh, in the corners of rooms, as I've said, sometimes down at the bottom of the rooms as well. They like sheltered areas, they like warmer climates. You won't tend to find them in, um, in very, very, very cold places. They don't winter well at all. So for that reason, they get to stay for now. Um, and the reason for that, uh, the reason why I'm not particularly fond on this particular species of spider is that they are expert spider hunters. And I mean expert. They will quite happily take down giant house spiders. Now you might wonder why, how can this remarkably spindly, fragile looking spider take down a great big chunky Aratogena atrica? And this is down to their legs and also their silk spinning skills. So what will happen is a, um, a, a focus will approach its prey raising itself up on its, its legs like this, keeping its body high out of the way. So that should the spider uh, manage to get a strike in first, all it's going to bite is the leg. It's not going to bother it too much. I mean, the spider's legs, they can even drop them if they need to. But before that happens, generally what happens is the focus has formed a cage around the spider with its legs. And then it uses its astonishing silk spinning skills and wraps the spider up before it even knows what's happening. It doesn't even bother to bite. It's just spun really, really quick. The spider is then immobilized and then the focus can um, bite the wrapped spider. Uh, allow its very weak venom to take effect uh, and then feed um, at its leisure. And uh, they are experts at doing this. They are experts at taking out other types of spider. In fact, if you don't want spiders in your home, your best bet is those guys because they will remove other species of spider. Um, they will also live in close proximity to each other, unlike most species of spider. 
but if food is scarce, they will even prey upon each other. So they are entirely cannibalistic. Most species of spider are cannibalistic to one extent or another. They will quite happily prey upon each other. Volkers takes it to a new level. They are actual spider hunters. And um, they spin quite a messy web, uh, a cob web, as it were, uh, up in the corner. And, and if they're not out hunting spiders actively, they will take anything that comes near it. Um, uh, any spiders and also winged insects such as, as flies as well. They just, they just specialize in eating other spiders. But they don't have it all their own way. Um, one species of spider in particular, not so much in the UK because of the differences of environment, but in other countries, certainly warmer countries, preys upon focus um, quite readily. And this is the jumping spider, um, sort of sea day. They are experts at preying on focus uh, phalangoides. And the reason behind this is that they can pinpoint the spider's body. So whereas most spiders can't get to the body because it's high up like this, jumping spider don't care about that. It's just arrows in on it, jumps, bypassing the legs, straight onto the body, munch. Focus is actually quite a weak bodied spider, so they're no match for these jumping ambushes. And this is why um, Focus has developed the defense mechanism that it has, and you, you may have seen this if you've tried to disturb one in its web. It will plant itself down with its legs like this, and then it will gyrate its body round rapidly, spinning round and 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 round, and round, and round, and round, and round very, very fast, whirring round. Um, if it's just been disturbing its web, this will just last quite a short time. Um, but if it identifies a predator that's after it, it can keep this up for hours. And obviously that spinning round makes it very difficult for the jumping spider to successfully pinpoint the spider's body, land on it and kill it. Um, so this is its defense mechanism against its predators. Now, the other thing about focus phalangoides is that they, uh, they breed very rapidly. Um, once you've got a couple in your house before long, you'll end up with loads. Um, they breed much like any other spider with the male risking the, uh, the, uh, the danger of being eaten. Um, one of the differences um, from a lot of spiders is unlike having a fixed egg sac that it will leave on um, like a wall or in the web, the female will actually have a bundle of eggs which are very visible as eggs. There's no fixed silk around them that are stuck together that she'll hold between her paper palps at the front um, that will then just hatch directly into spiders. These spiders and then clamber onto the mother and then disperse after a few days to a week. Uh, and as I said, they will cannibalize each of each other. So they, they will disperse, but there's only so much food to go around so not all of those spiders are going to survive but you will find that if you've got focus uh, phalangoides you generally will have quite a lot of them um, they are a prolific species to say the least now at the start of the video i did announce um, or i did say that there was a uh, an old wives tale regarding the species and you probably know what it is people say that this particular species has a very 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 high venom a lethal venom but they just can't bite and because they can't bite we're safe well the spider lord is here to tell you that that is utter bollocks if you excuse my french focus phalangoides has fangs of around about 0.25 um, millimeters um, and as the human epidermis is 0 0.1 millimeters they can quite easily bite now i don't know of anybody that has been bitten by a focus i, I don't know what you'd have to do to get bitten by a focus but they do not have a strong venom. In fact, they have a very weak venom, which is why they rely upon their spinning tactics. Um, nonetheless, they are a very interesting species of spider. Not entirely welcome in my house. As I said, warm days, they'd get bunted outside, but for now, they can stay. and Hopefully they won't eat the uh, steatosian nobilis that I've got up in that corner. I might have to rescue that at some point. So yeah, hopefully you found this interesting. We'll be on with another spider um, very soon. I've got a feeling I might pick Amarobius, the lace weaver. I think that might be a fun one to cover. Um, so until next time, stay safe and uh, remember, chill out. It's just a spider. Cheers. <laughs>